Hey everybody, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by. I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Oh, hi Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time we're going to be talking about my setup for Kalashnikon. If you're not familiar with that, it is an AK shooting event that spans three days in Houston, Missouri. And I got pretty much turned on to this shooting event last year. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to go last year, but this year I do have the opportunity and I am full steam ahead this coming weekend for the shooting event. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel, I don't do Patreon and uh, to be frankly honest with you, I, I really don't like to do red ads anymore or read ads or whatever the case may be. Uh, if you guys want to support the channel financially, you can actually join the channel we got some pretty interesting benefits. Uh, you can hit that join button just down below, or you can pick up some merch from Ballistic Inc. That's another great way to support the channel as well. Another great way is to uh, subscribe to the channel, share this video with your friends, and comment down below, what is your two-gun setup? Do you even run competitions? If you do, let me know what you think about two-gun. Is it a training aid, or is it just to have fun? That's a great question I always get into uh, with a lot of people. I firmly believe that if you do it right, it could be used for training. But at the end of the day, it is just kind of for fun. All right, so let's start off with the belt. And I am using the Blue Alpha Gear War Belt uh, that is very similar to that of the Warrior Poet Society. I know that they've teamed up with Blue Alpha Gear to do their own belt, which is basically this one. I've had this one since 2018, and it has seen numerous two-gun competitions here locally, several Kalash Bashes, a Tactical Games, and now Kalashnikon coming up this weekend. And I pretty much stick to the same thing uh, when it comes to this belt. It has also gone through several training classes, not only with uh, the Pervictus group, but also with uh, Tactical Response fighting, fighting Rifle. And I have felt that this has been a very adequate belt uh, for anyone to use. It's my go-to. You will also know that I don't have my pistol attached to this. I'll talk about that here in just a second. But the mag holsters here are going to be the HSGI polymer mag holsters, and I really do like these. These are gonna be very similar to what Clayco uses with the G-Code um, mag holsters, but I like HSGI. It's just a pers personal preference. It doesn't do anything better or worse than G-Code, it's just a different brand, so that's what I run with. Uh, the pistol mags are, and well, pistol and rifle mags, they're extremely versatile. You can use just about any type of uh, double stack pistol mag on these here, and that's something I really do like because I'm constantly changing firearms out to do reviews for you guys. In addition to that, with these rifles, uh, mag holsters, I can run AR-15 mags and they fit in perfectly, no problem. I can switch up and run my uh, 545 or 556 AK mags. They fit in there just fine. They're a little tight because of the, um, the lugs on either side. And then I can also switch it out and run 762 by 39 mags as well. A little bit thicker, a little bit tougher to get in and out on the holster, but at the end of the day, they do work, and I have ran it in competitions that way as well. Just behind the mag pouches, I do have a dump pouch here. Uh, nothing special with this. It's just something I picked up from Amazon for like 10 bucks. It was really, really super cheap, and it works. So that's something I really, really do like. So that is the short and sweet of my belt. All right, so now we'll talk about my uh, holster setup, and this is the Blackhawk Omnivore. Um, I know a lot of people don't like Blackhawk uh, because of their Serpa holsters, and I totally get that. This one is designed specifically for the TLR1, so if you have a TLR1 attached to your pistol, it will fit any pistol that you put in here, and that's something that I really, really do like for me because that means that I can use one holster for a whole bunch of different reviews, and it does really, really good. The retention is on the light, not the pistol, so that means that it is a level two retention. Press down with your thumb and remove the pistol. It has ran through, like I said, with the belt, it has ran through a couple 
um, IDPA matches. It's ran through two gun matches. It's gone through tactical games last year. It took up took a beating at tactical tactical games last year, and then has gone through uh, some training as well. So really rugged. I have the QLS system set up here on a Safari Land drop leg holster. Uh, the retention belt here is um, a T-Rex Arms retention belt. So uh, yeah, it, it's a really good setup. Now what I do with this is I attach this to the inner belt on my Blue Alpha battle belt war belt, whatever, uh, I attach it to my inner belt. So if for whatever reason, I don't need to run the outer portion of the belt with all my mag holsters and stuff like that, then I can just remove that and just run my pistol. Or if I just need a break from it, I can just take that off, still walk around with my uh, pistol attached to my person and no problem. So let's move into what pistols am I going to be running because I am shooting Saturday and Sunday so I am going to probably switch up what I'm using. The first day will be with the CZ SPL-1 Tactical. This thing has been a great pistol. I really, really do like it. Uh, the first trigger pull with that double action is always a little tricky, but um, the single action trigger pull is uh, really, really nice. I really do like how crisp and uh, easy it is. Uh, I would love to be able to run the Beretta 92X RDO that I had, uh, but I, I went ahead and I'm gonna stick with this with the iron sights and see how that does. If I don't like it, then I'm going to switch up to another pistol that I have a lot of success with when it comes to my shooting competitions, and that's going to be the CZ P10C optics ready with the 509T on here. And this setup has been has been great. I have had no issues with this whatsoever. I really, really do like this setup. So um, if I wanted to run an optic for my pistol, I may run this. And the great thing about it is I could run this both days. I could run it either, neither day. I could run the SBO one tactical both days or I could run that one neither day and just run this one. So I have the ability to switch back and forth and just kind of use what I've really enjoyed. So my plan is to start off with the SBO one tactical and then we'll see what happens from there. All right, so let's get into the rifles because I know that's what everybody's here for. And the first one should be no big surprise. It's going to be the SAM-5. This has been the rifle that I teamed up with Clayco to um, kind of soup up and turn it into a bit of a competition rig. And I have really, really enjoyed it. I know my last video, a lot of people were asking, why are you running an AK for um, competitions and stuff like that? Well, this is the reason. Uh, Kalashnikon is specific to AKs. I'm going to run this one. One of the biggest reasons that I really do like running this one is because number one, it's 5.56. Five, uh, so I can dial it in really, really good with a lot of the different bullet weights that I need it to run. So if I am going to be doing a lot of shooting that is like 50 yards and in, I can run just standard 55 grains and not have to worry about it. Things for long distances, I'm going to sight it in with the um, primary arms micro prism sight. I'm going to get it sighted in for a 75 or 77 grain uh, projectile and get really, really good accuracy with it so that I can reach out and touch those targets that are rumored to be up to 600 yards at Kalashnikon. So yeah, uh, I've got it teamed up with a RS Regulate mount on the back here, uh, k &S piston on the inside, kind of touched up the internals a little bit and uh, polished them just ever so slightly. I've got a flash hire on the front here with the chemo adapter. So if I wanted to run it suppressed, I could, but I'm not going to do it this weekend. And uh, then added a little goon tape on the on the handle here. So uh, yeah, it's been good. The great thing about it is the SAM-5 will run AK-74 mags and I am using the Pot Arms follower on this and have had zero issues with it. The only thing that you have to be careful with is that you can overload these magazines and put 31 rounds in there and that's going to jam up your bolt. So uh, just, be, just be mindful of that. Um, make sure that you load only 30 rounds. If you do, 
you're not gonna have any problems whatsoever. So there is day one's setup. And again, I may run this both days. I may only run it on Saturday, but definitely Saturday to prep myself for the tactical games. So there is that. The second rifle that I have chosen to run on Sunday, if I do choose to switch rifles from the Sand 5, has been one that I have really struggled on. I have a number of different AKs that I would love to run. I've got the Fuller, Phoenix uh, 74 build that I did a couple of years ago. I've got the Zestava M70 that I would love to run. I've got Anya, which is the Romanian underfolder that I could run as well. And at the end of the day, I went ahead and chose the PSA AK-103. And uh, this has the Midwest Industries Alpha Series furniture on it. And I, I decided to go ahead and run this one because uh, of a couple different reasons. Number one is I can do a follow-up video on actually putting the Alpha Series through a couple of different competitions. And number two is I can really start ramping up the uh, round count on this second 103. And that's done by design. Uh, I've talked about a 103 on the channel uh, a little over a year ago and I have round counts going through that. I'm going to have round counts going through this so we can compare an older 103 with one of the brand new 103s and talk about some of the differences, talk about some of the wear patterns and stuff like that. So um, have the opportunity to run 762 by 39 and 556 this weekend at Kalashnikon and I'm excited for it. I, I, I'm, I really think that this is going to be uh, a fun weekend. I think my setups are going to keep me competitive. Do I think I'm going to be able to win? No. I don't even think that I'll be able to place in the top 10 <laughs> because we have people like AK Mario and uh, Clayco and a couple other guys that are in my squad that are just phenomenal shooters. So um, for me to be able to compete with them is going to be really, really tough. But they could have a bad day. I could have a really good day. Who knows? And that's the great thing about these shooting competitions is anything can change in just a few seconds. So with that being said, what do you guys think of my setup? Is it the way that you would go? What are some of the changes that you would make? Let me know, sound off in the comment section down below. I would love to hear what you have to say. With all that being said, I'm excited for this weekend. I cannot wait to get to Houston, Missouri and not only see my friends, but also to uh, get back into competing as well. So hopefully there'll be a few more competitions this year and I'll be able to do some more videos for you guys, show you uh, my setups and how well I'm doing and so on and so forth. But with all that being said, thank you so much for swinging by. I really do appreciate it. Again, if you wanna support the channel, Ballistic Inc. is where all my merch is at. You can jump on that. I'll have a link in the pinned comment. And we will catch you guys next time. As always, freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. Catch you guys later. Bye, y'all.